Good morning. I am here, I'm just in the corner. I have to keep remembering to look up at the camera. <laughs> Hopeless. Good morning, guys. Welcome to another Sunday in my kitchen. Just going to tweet round camera a little bit and get in place we're we're just getting sorted waiting for uh give people a couple of minutes to join because facebook will ping the notification and you'll see the little counter down here um but good morning i hope everybody's really good and well wherever you are in the world in the uk or um if you're watching this on catch up hi hope <laughs> everybody's fine I'm Lou from Crumbs and Corkscrews, and uh, we're live on the Facebook page, in the group, and on YouTube. It's quite scary when I think of all the people who end up watching this, but it's really cool. Um, and yeah, just a quick weather check whilst waiting. It's lovely blue September weekend. End of autumn, uh, end of summer, beginning of autumn vibes out there. It's really, really lovely. So I hope wherever you are, you're well. Uh, today we're going to be getting into another tray bake. We're going to be doing a vanilla one, and it's not like the ones that we've put done before. It's not like the chocolate one or the Oreo one that we've done. We're going to be using a different, um, different bake uh, batter mixture technique so we're going to be using a reverse creaming technique on this one uh, a bit different to what i normally do for normal vanilla cakes where you want them nice and big and springy and light this um this reverse creaming method is going to give you a nice fine crumb a really velvety buttery texture to it um, and not have too much rise because we don't want it to be domed and, and puffed up we want a nice um sheet cake so we've just got a minute we'll let everybody get in um and then i'll tell you a bit more about what we've got here and what we what we're going to do and a bit more about the reverse creaming method as well so um wow i can see everybody joining hi wherever you are give us a shout out say uh, say where you are in the world it's lovely to know where you are um I hope you've got your tea, I've got my coffee, so um, yeah, all good. I'm going to say, aha, good morning, Gina. <laughs> this is the new hair. It doesn't look at all like it did on the uh, Facebook story because I have no idea how to uh, blow dry it with all those curls, but my hairdresser is amazing. <laughs> so I did get your message, thank you. Um, cool. Uh, the little iPhone touch app which makes me change all the screens is having a moment this morning. So uh, we're going to be using the laptop. So if you see me, as for anybody who's seen me before, I've got the laptop down here and the new camera and setup in front of me. So if you see me looking down, that's where I'm going. But we're ready to go. So let's get into this recipe vanilla sheet cake yay so originally i was going to do all sorts of wonderful things and stuff this with harry bow but a couple of tests have proven a little bit not so good so we've um i've taken inspiration from this for this from uh what seems to be everybody's favorite sheet cake um oops which is uh, oh photoshop decided to open <laughs> i can't see what's going on Christ. happy days 
Yes, so we were originally going to be doing a vanilla cake stuffed with Haribo, but after a couple of tests, including freezing them and seeing what happens, we didn't get the best cake texture at all. So what I've decided to do is we're going to do a straightforward vanilla tray bake um, and then decorate it on the top with lots of bright and colourful um, buttercream and then the Haribo as well. Uh, you can use other sweeties if you want, but I have these little guys in the cupboard. Um, Haribo's actually just turned 25, Haribo Starmix, which uh, seems like it's been around a lot longer than that. But these these little guys have been around, the little hearts and the rings and our little tiny cola bottles and our gummy bears have been around for about 25 years uh, this year. So they, they're a bit of an icon in the sweetie candy world. And um, before we get, somebody mentioned on the page, oh, you know, they're full of um, chemicals and all sorts of colorings and things. But I did a little bit of investigation and actually, Haribo are a bit like good old Marks and Spencer's Percy Pigs. They are natural flavorings and colors. And there's no funny stuff on the ingredients. Everything's a natural ingredient. So, they're not sort of those brightly coloured, scarily neon coloured sweets that you get. If you look at them, they are quite uh, a neutral colour. But these little guys, yeah, they're 25 years old this year. Our little, um, our little uh, gummy sweets. My favourites must be the hearts or the fried eggs, <laughs> if I'm not honest. So we're going to be using these as a topping instead and we're going in then for a vanilla tray bake and just in the run up I was saying we're going to be doing this as a, um, a reverse creaming method so let's just take a quick look at the old recipe. Now this, this, this image here is my vanilla tray bake which is stuffed with Oreos um, and that one's got an Oreo crumb on the uh, buttercream on the top so you can find that over on the blog but this one we're going to be doing we're going to be doing the same sort of cake bakes and we're going to be doing it obviously without the Oreos but we're going to be changing it a little bit and doing a reverse creaming method now most people when they're when you're making a uh, vanilla cake, and I am just for usual standard vanilla cake, doing the traditional creaming method where we're going to cream our butter and our sugar and then add our eggs and then add our dry ingredients. We're going to turn it all on its head. We're going to do the dry ingredients first. We're then going to start and add our fats and our liquids. And then the very last thing we're going to do is add our eggs. Now, this is going to give a it's not going to give as much rise as the creaming method, but it's going to give a really light, springy crumb texture, that really melt in your mouth, velvety texture that you get um, from some vanilla cakes um, out there. And we've got a whole raft of ingredients. So this one we're going to be doing is in a sheet pan. Um, and I think this is a nine... By 13, I will double check what it is, but there's a link to it here. I'm just going to be doing it in this. You can do it in a brownie tin as well. You can, if you don't want to do it as a tray bake, do it as a layer cake. You're just going to get those different textures on the on the layers. But we're going to be doing it in this guy. And what? First up, then we're going to set our oven. I'm just going to ping over the ingredients up for you. Just while we do it. So we're going to start with setting our oven as always to about 180 degrees, 350 Fahrenheit. And we're just going to let that preheat as we go um, throughout the, uh, the morning whilst we get everything together. So let's talk about our ingredients. So normally the vanilla cake, simple ingredients, butter, sugar, eggs and flour. We've got a few extra things going on in this. We are, let's just pop that one to the side, we're going to be using plain flour or all-purpose flour. Um, again, we're not adding 
uh, we're not using self-raising flour because we're going to be adding our own raising agent here. And it's because we want to control this a lot more uh, because we don't want it to really dome up and be sort of quite a puffy cake. We want that nice sheet layer cake. So this is plain or all purpose flour. We've got 350 grams here. For our raising agents, we've got both baking powder and baking soda. Now we're using a teaspoon, as I remember, we're using a teaspoon of baking powder and only half a teaspoon of baking soda. Um, and when we get into sort of when we start mixing everything together, I'll tell you why we're using both. Because some people say, well, well, you know, surely they're the same thing. They are slightly different. Um, but when we talk, when we start adding the dry ingredients together, we'll talk about those. Our last in dry ingredient is our sugar. We've got here 300 grams of caster sugar. And I'm using a vanilla sugar that I made for extra vanilla. -y. And this is literally, I have a pot that I seal up, I pop my caster sugar in, and then I add some vanilla pods in there. It looks a bit like a spider crawling out. Uh, it's not, it's vanilla pods. <laughs> and they will infuse in the sugar, just letting all the nice flavours come out and that beautiful vanilla smell. And as soon as I, uh, as I get to the bottom, I just retop it back up. And they'll probably stay in there for a good 12 months, just keep layering out my vanilla sugar. Um, if I, for this recipe, I'm using half and half. So I've used half the sugar is vanilla and half is non-vanilla caster sugar. But you don't have to, you can just use all normal caster sugar. So there's 300 grams in there. We've also got uh, three eggs. These guys have been out at room temperature to, uh, so they're not cold when we add everything to them. We've got, I'm just gonna pop this little butter over here. And then we've got um, our fats. So we've got here 230 grams of um, room temperature softened butter. Now this is salted, you can use unsalted or slightly salted. If you're using unsalted, you want to add, like I said before, a pinch of fine sea salt because the salt helps just bring out all of those flavours um, uh, and your taste buds really like it. So this is 230 grams of salted butter. Also in the fridge, this is not all the fat because normally when, you, when you're making that vanilla cake, it's the rules, you've normally got equal quantities of flour and sugar and the butter but we haven't, obviously we've got 300 there. We've got 230 grams of butter, but we've also in the fridge, let's grab them out now. Before I forget. We've got 240 mils of whole milk. Um, so we're using whole milk, you can use semi-skimmed, but don't go any less than that. Don't go to the skin stuff because we still need the fat content of our milk. And we've also in here got sour cream. This is 80 grams of sour cream, or you can use buttermilk. And this is going to help um, give that cake the the, the nice vanilla. -y. It helps keep it moist with all the others, but also. This is an acid, the buttermilk is an um, sorry, an uh, acid, uh, our baking powder needs, is, needs to be neutralized. It's an alkaline, so the two of those are gonna work together, but as they work together, that's what's gonna activate the baking soda and make it lift. Let's say we'll talk about that shortly. So let's get into it. And, we're doing all this today with the stand mixer. You can do it with a handheld mixer if you prefer. Um, but we're doing it with stand mixer. And we're just going to use the paddle attachment. I've got the one with the silicon blade on it. And, oops, when it goes on, I've lost the little nook. Ah, there it is. Um, and this just helps scrape down. We are going to stop anyway and scrape down. 
But like I said, this is the reverse creaming method. So we're going to start with our dry ingredients. So that is our flour. So this is our plain flour. And just as usual, sifting it out just helps aerate it. Let's just get that. All in there. If you can get cake flour, which is the really fine flour, doesn't have a, doesn't typically have a raising agent in it. Um, in the UK, you might find it called Supreme Cake Flour or Premium Cake Flour. It's a really fine um, texture. It's really it's ground so much finer than the flour already is. It's a bit like double O that you use for pasta, and it's um, it just makes it's great for vanilla cake. You don't want to use it for chocolate cake or anything like that because it just makes it just perfectly light. It's it's amazing. So if you've got cake flour or you know where you can get cake flour, that's the one you want to go for. Next, I'm going to add in my baking powder and my baking soda. Now, baking soda itself is um, causes a reaction. So that's why we're going to add our buttermilk to counteract that. So baking soda, when it works with the acid, that's when it forms those bubbles and it's going to give the lift and the air. And that happens whilst it bakes. Baking powder is actually a combination of baking soda, or bicarb, um, and it's got a little bit of cream of tartar in there, and it's also got corn starch or corn flour in it. And it just helps as a rising agent, but that starts working here in, in the mixer and also whilst it's baked, when you add all the wet ingredients with it. Because the baking powder, the baking soda only activates in the oven, although it's um, stronger than the baking powder in quantity, it won't give us enough lift. So adding the baking powder helps give it that full lift that we want without it going over the top um, and having to add too much wet um, ingredients in terms of the buttermilk or the sour cream to um, activate the baking soda. I'll explain it a little bit better hopefully in the blog post, but there is a reason to it. So baking soda is about three or four times more powerful than baking powder, which is why we've got the two differences in the quantities. Um, so they're doing the same sort of thing together. And hey, I think we're back. <laughs> Slight little hiccup there. Also into our dry ingredients, and we're going to add our sugar. And I'm actually going to sift this because I don't want big lumps of sugar in this. And that's also part of the difference between the creaming and the reverse creaming method. So the creaming method, we're sort of getting those big sugar crystals and we're combining them with the butter and we're breaking them all up and you get that really nice, sweet, buttery mixture. Um, because we're not doing that, the fat's going in afterwards, we want to make sure we haven't got any big lumps of sugar um, in here. So in here is my flour, my baking powder, my baking soda, and my caster sugar. So all my dry, and I'm literally gonna turn it on in the plug. I'm just going to give it a gentle mix together. If you're doing this with a handheld mixer, you can do this one by hand if you want to. But this is just combining everything into the dry element of our cake. Just how to disperse everything. 
So next we then want to add our fat. Now at this point, adding the fat to this dry mixture means that we're going to coat all those flour particles with fat. And doing so, because each one is individually coated with fat, that fat, fat at that point, stops the gluten forming. Um, unlike a bread where you want that gluten and that elasticity to sort of get your bread dough together, what we want here is we want to restrict that gluten formation. And by doing, adding the butter now, coats those flour particles and stops them working with each other when we add all the wet ingredients to form the gluten. And again, that's going to give us that really fine crumb on our cake, that really springy, velvety texture. So we do this in parts because we don't want to add it all in to get like, all, the, all the wet together. We want to do the butter and some of the milk first, and then we're going to add our um, sour cream and the rest of the milk to it. So we want to give the, the flour time to, to sort of bond with what we've got. So in here, we're adding our room temperature butter. This has been out this morning. Um, and it wants to be room temperature. And that's that. When you push it with your finger, you should just make a dent. It shouldn't be... Um, it shouldn't be squidgy. So in here we've got our butter. We're going to add half of our milk. So this is 240 mils of milk. We're going to add about 120. She was just checking how much milk I got in there. There we go. And we're going to pop this on medium speed. Get splat for milk. And this is it's gonna start to form that dry. You're gonna look at it and think, oh, it looks quite doughy, but don't worry, it's fine. You just wanna mix start mixing it up. And remember, we're not adding our eggs yet, so it's gonna look quite like a really dry batter, if you've ever made a cake and it's, you're not quite sure about it, it's, I'll show you it. It's going to quite look quite thick, but that's fine. So in next, we're going to add the rest of our milk, and I'm going to pop this in the bottom so it doesn't splash me in the face again. And we're going to add our sour cream. This is a mixture actually of sour cream and buttermilk, but you can use um, you can use all sour cream. I just didn't quite have enough. But the buttermilk and the sourness of the cream, they're the bits that are gonna work with that baking soda to give it the lift. And again, gently, can be a bit messy this one, she says, this one that look. But now you'll start to see that batter coming into a nice smooth um, texture. Just going to Wipe the splash of milk up. Let's show you what this looks like. This is like it's almost there if you think cake batter. See, it's almost there, but it's not got those important things, the eggs. Just gonna... Pop that 
back on there. And before we add the eggs, we're going to add our vanilla. So we're going to add, I'm going to use the normal vanilla bean paste. I'm going to add a squeeze of that. So it's about a teaspoon in. I wanted to show you this little guy. This is our vanilla extract that we made. Must be about four or five weeks ago now. So it's getting there and it's nearly ready to start using. Um, so I want to leave it probably till the end of October to give it a real good time to mature. Um, and that is just vodka and vanilla beans. I'll link out to the kitchen live that we did on this. Um, and once it's ready to fully use, I will be doing you a blog post on it. Um, but it's it's great. I've got a small bottle. And I've got a large litre uh, bottle of um, vodka, which has got about, I think I've got about 18 beans in there. Uh, but I'll link out to that for you as well. So we've squeezed in our vanilla bean paste, and now we're going to add our eggs. So these are just room temperature, three, three of those. So one. Two. Oh, a bit messy this morning. Very messy this morning. Three. I'm just going to quickly wash my hands. Just going to again starting on gentle whisk those through. Now, when you're whisking it, beating it together, it might look like it's starting to split. Don't worry, it's just the eggs all coming together, and then give it a good minute or so at medium fast. So we've got our vanilla cake batter mix. Let's just get rid of that. Just going to pop that to one side because we're going to need a bit just to have wipe down the unit. My hand eye coordination this morning is all over the place. Okay, so we've got actually, you'll find it looks a very runny cake batter. But it looks like that. And then into our sheet pan then. I'm just going to use cake release on this. You can line it if you want to. Um, I'm using cake release. This is the cake release that I've been using. This is the one that I made on 2nd of August. So it's just really quickly three simple ingredients, oil, flour, and um, vegetable shortening, also known, you might find it as Treps in the UK or Crisco elsewhere. And this is just like the stuff you get in a can. Um, 
So, but we just, we make it home. <laughs> it's just so much easier. And it will keep the mixture at room temperature for six months. Um, but you can see it's just like this. And we're just going to realise I'm in the wrong place again. We're just going to spread it on nice and thickly. Make sure you get it into the corners and on the edges. Um, and give it a really good coat. The thing with this, rather than using like what I was watching someone the other day, just using butter. I mean, you can grease your pans with butter, but that butter's going to cook, and we don't want it to cook. So that's when you end up with really dark, edgy bits, as well as overcooking your cake. But we want just something that's not going to taint the taste of our cake. It's not going to cause that cake to cook any quicker on the outside, so you get dark edges. This is just going to acts as a base. The flour means that your cake is protected from the oil and the tracks in here cooking that, that fat. So we're adding, it looks like we're adding a lot with a baking spray, you know, you, you spray, you've got that um, extra bit there. But we want to make sure this do comes out so i've tested this for a while for quite a while and um it works really well i'm not going to say i've not had any fails because it's been more fails <laughs> I've got some on Facebook users saying hi, somebody's in the group. Let's just see where you are. Everybody. Oh, Facebook is still having its moment with not showing um, people that are streaming <laughs> that they're actually streaming. It just says you're possibly streaming. Oh. Hi Taran. Hello. So we've got a nice cake tin, all nice and lined, ready to go. The details for this are on the blog. I will link to it. That now just goes back in the cupboard, ready for the next time. So we're gonna grab our vanilla cake mixture and just literally pour in. There we are. We need to pour in a moment. Let's put that in the sink. And just with the trusty angled spatula, just layer it off. So Bake Off is back this week in the UK. It starts on Tuesday, I think. And we have, uh, I know it's going on Netflix for the States on Friday. So we'll try not to do any spoiler alerts. It's going to be interesting. They filmed during COVID, so a lot of quarantining, a lot of space. Um, we've got Matt Lucas is joining Noel Fielding this time. Sandy Toxpig has gone and Prue and Paul are back. So despite COVID, some things are still going ahead. I need to de invest in a deep pan, she can. It's about, um, let's just pop your comment on Gina. It's, so this one's about, it's just over an inch deep. Um, I think these are about 9 .99. I'll link to it, I've got an Amazon link to. 
it. So I'll link out to it. This is a non-stick one. I love it. I do all the tray bakes in it. I've done the cookie, uh, I've done cookie like sheet cookies in it as well and everything. So I'll ping you the link um, when we're done. And uh, you can get all sorts, but this is a nice heavy gauge as well. So we've got that in. That's all ready to go. Our oven is up to temperature, 183.50. I am, because I've just cleaned the oven, because we're selling the house, I am going to pop it onto a baking sheet, though, as well. Because knowing my look, now I've just cleaned the oven, it will get messy. So, I'm going to pop this in pan oven, 180, 350. Fahrenheit, just in the middle. And this is going to take about 30 minutes, 30, 35 minutes. So I've popped that on for 15, and after 15, I'm just going to spin it around. I know that oven has a hot spot in the back left corner. So that end will bake quicker than this front end. So after about 15 minutes, I'll just spin it all round, and it's... Um, it gets a nice even bake really. So let's just get rid of some mess because I am not very organized this morning. I thought I was. Two seconds, I'm just gonna get a clean, give the mixing bowl a clean. And a fresh tea towel. Okay, so then, what we're going to do with this, if you didn't join us at the start, is this was going to be originally a Harry Bow um, tray bake. Um, that the Harry Bow were baked inside of that vanilla cake, but I've had a few baking fails on testing, so that's why we've just gone with a standard vanilla cake for this one. Uh, um, and what we're going to do instead is we're going to whip up some vanilla buttercream and decorate that with different colours and then pipe it all over the top and then add our Harry Bow. So if you're in the UK, um, it's a bit like the Marks and Spencer's Dolly Mixture Tray Bake, which is everybody's sort of go-to office celebration cake. Um, you can get a Harry Bow one I've seen in other supermarkets, um, but they use dolly mixtures. But I'm using Harry Bow. Harry Bow, these little dudes are 25 years old this year. Uh, so those little hearts and fried eggs and all sorts, 25 years old they are. Oh, bless them. And what I didn't realise is I bought the mini packs because I thought, these will stop me from eating all of them whilst I'm baking because they're in smaller packs um, rather than having the one big pack of Star Mix and then eating all of them. But there are also these, oh, see I told you, I'm just rubbish today. These little dudes are tiny as well. So I'm just going to show you. The love hearts are a little small. They're small compared to what the normal size they are. They're so cute. So we're going to make a vanilla um, buttercream for this. And we're going to do it slightly different to normal. We're going to add some cream in it for a nice, really whipped texture and a more smooth taste. So with our vanilla buttercream, and most buttercreams that I make, I start by whipping up my butter. That's the key thing for me, is getting this nice and whipped up. And you might think, well, why, why bother? You know, we're just gonna add it to the, to the butter, we're just gonna add it to the icing sugar. Well, it just, again, even though it's a, we do it with eggs to incorporate air, and we're gonna do actually the same with butter. As daft as you may think that sounds, we're gonna whip it up to add some air. So 
So in here, I've got 250 grams of butter. And again, this is room temperature butter. It's butter that I can make an indent with my finger, but when I do that, I'm not pushing my finger straight through. It's not oily and greasy. So we've got our butter in there. We're gonna use the balloon whisk attachment on the KitchenAid today. You can do this just with a normal handheld mixer as well. Um, it doesn't have to be this. So we're gonna start off just whipping it and the butter will go quite pale. We'll start off that normal yellowy buttery colour and as we whip this up and we whip this into uh, that light fluffy nuts that we want, it will start to pale down. We're also going to be using our vanilla bean paste and we've got in here 80 ml of double cream or heavy cream. Again, we want that fat fold then because it's going to make it really nice and, and unctuous and luxurious which will, will go with the nice velvety texture that we're going to get in that crumb cake, uh, crumb that we're going to get in that tray then so we've gone for a minute or two on medium we're just going to pop it onto high now and then Whilst that's doing, what I'm going to be doing next is I'm going to be colouring this buttercream. And I've lost the nozzle in the process. It should have three. Um, but then when I decorate it, I'm going to be decorating it with different styles. So I'm not just going to put it on with a palette knife. I'm going to use swirls and... Um, Blobs and all sorts of different uh, nozzles in order to give it a, a really nice, fun celebration texture and look and feel to it. Um, so we'll talk about that in a minute. If you can see on here, the butter is really gone, really nice and pale. And inside, there's a little bit of butter on the app. You might not see it on the camera, but there's a little bit, bit of butter on the outside where we can see it's significantly more yellow than our uh, whipped butter. So we're just gonna, just like you would in a cake, spray it down. And we've had a conversation before about can you use things like the cake butters or margarines for uh, making your buttercream and you can but you have to remember that they've got higher water content so when you do things like this they're going to slacken and they're going to if your buttercream's not going to hold as much if you're making buttercream you really do want to be using full fat butter now you can make a vegan one that a combination of um, vegan friendly butter and the vegetable fat, the tracks like we use in the um, cake release. Um, but again, you have to be really careful of how much of this you do, the whipping, because the water content will just make it slacken. So we've whipped our butter up. It looks lush to be quite honest, but that is just pure butter. And let's just get that off there. We're now going to start and adding our, we're going to add our icing sugar and our double cream. Now, let's just move, oops, that so I can do both. Give it a, a squeeze of the old vanilla bean paste again. We want that vanilla really running through all of this. Let's get rid of them. And then our icing sugar or powdered sugar. This stuff is amazing and a nightmare to use all at once. If anybody's made buttercream before, you will know. So, 
I don't just want to pour all this in and then whack it on the stand mixer because it's so fine. Even when just getting it out of the packet's way, this thing just clouds up and you're getting buttercream in your hair and on all the light fittings and on your face and you realize that you just covered in it. So to start off, I'm going to take a couple of spoons here. So you, if you're doing a smaller quantity, just do this by the spoonful um, and then add through. So I've just taken five there and I can see it in the air. Before I start whipping this together, I'm just going to fold it in. You can see it smoking. <laughs> it's the icing sugar. You can see it. Um, just get it started to fold in. Um, this one is... Now, this is Tate and Lyle. That's icing sugar, that powdered sugar is really fine, um, which is why it does sort of smoke up a lot. Once I've started, it's in like, started to get crummy. I'm going to pop that on here. We started just on gentle, and then. Whisk that together. And then I'm going to add a little bit more. So I'm going to add another five, two, three. Count with Four, five. And again, fold it in. And as you start now to fold it in, you'll realize that you need something a little bit extra to start getting it all combined in. So we're going to use double cream in this one. You can just use um, milk, but we want the double cream because we're going to, that double cream is also going to whip up. So it's going to, as, as we whip the double cream, it's going to give us a nice, light, whipped, um, buttercream. So I'm going to pour in, I've poured just about a tablespoon to start with and just give that another fold through. Don't want to lose any of it so we just scrape it off on the balloon. Whisk. Pop that back down and again start gently. I didn't with this one, the tape. I didn't, this is Tate and Lyle and it's really fine, but when I use the silver spoon, I do sieve it. Um, it's entirely up to you. It does make an utter mess. Um, the silver spoon one I tend to find is a lot more clumped in the packet. Um, so I do sieve it, um, but it, most of the time, Gina, it's because it is just an utter mess to take this. I've got icing sugar everywhere. So um, some recipes say to sieve, um, I'd, I'd eyeball your icing sugar. If you're thinking when it comes out and you're, weighing it out that it's a bit clumpy or you you think it's a bit heavy then yes sieve it through because that again a bit like flour it's going to aerate it up as well this is just quite the the silver the, the technical stuff that we've got here is just super fine really super fine um and it just gets everyone <laughs> So we've added a little bit more icing sugar and a bit more double cream. We're just going to pop that through again and raise that up. Um, 
minute left on it. <laughs> if you can see, I've got a real, it's got a real rise on this one today. It will sink as it, um, as it cools a little bit. So this has got 35 seconds. So I'm just going to, before we start um, whisking more buttercream, I'm just going to turn that around. I'm going to pop it on for another 15 minutes. This one might need, it feels a little bit heavier, it might need an extra five on the end. But we'll see. And then last, our last lot of ooh, icing sugar in a big icing sugar cloud. And the last of our double cream, just straight in with this. Now, so what we're going to do is we're going to fold this in and then we're just going to let it beat until it's pale, a lot paler. So fold this all in just really gently, especially if you're doing it with a hand mixer and you, you, you end up just absolutely covered in this stuff. It's, it's really quite fine. So, I'm just going to pop that on there, give that a scrape on the balloon whisk, get that all in. And we're just going to leave that for a minute or so just to um, KitchenAid is due a service. It's a bit temperamental at times. You'll notice as the as everything whips, the butter does get paler. Um, if you want a pure white buttercream, you're gonna need to add a whitener so you can get um, whitener colours. Um, but we're gonna when we colour it, we're gonna be using the food gels so they. They can buttercream and then by that point hopefully our cake will be coming out and uh, ready to go and then I'll decorate it for you guys later. So this is our buttercream as you see it's nice and pale and fluffy. It smells amazing, it tastes amazing, I am biased. But what we were looking for was a buttercream that wasn't heavy or claggy. That when you eat it, it's nice, it's just velvet and smooth. Um, and doing the, the technique where you whip the butter to start with and then gradually adding the icing sugar and the, the double cream just helps bring it all together. If you put it all in at once, yeah, you, you can get a nice smooth buttercream. You're going to have to really give it a good old whip. Um, to to 
get that air into it. But by doing this way, similar to baking a cake, making the cake batter, we're adding it in stages, we're bringing the air in. This stuff is amazing. Um, it's probably, it's just vanilla, but it's fantastic. So what we're going to be doing then is, um, I thought I'd got three piping rods of that, but I haven't. Um, we're going to be decorating the top of our sheet cake with different um, different styles, different three different colours, three different styles of piping. And it's just going to be a free for all. I mean, we, you can just, if you don't want to, you can just smooth the buttercream over and throw the Haribo on and have lots of fun. It's great. That's the best thing about these sheet pancakes is they don't have to be over the top. You're not stacking cakes and crumb coating and filling and, and all of that sort of stuff. We're going to take it out of here. We're going to let it cool for 10 minutes, pop it onto a wire rack, let it really cool, and then we're just going to pop the buttercream on. So if you want to, you can just take this as it is and smooth it over the top of your cool cake. But like I said, we're going to mix this up a bit. We want it to be a little bit fun. It's Harry Bo's 25th birthday. Um, so I found out. This is not sponsored, by the way. These were a bargain buy on the latest online shop. <laughs> um, and we're going to need pipe lots of different things. So I've got three nozzles here. This is the Wilton. Ooh, you might not be able to see it very well because of the camera. No, that's a bit blurry because we're on. We're not. We're on manual focus rather than auto focus. Um, this is a Wilton 1M nozzle. So this is the one where you get a lot of. Um, you'll see mainly cupcakes decorated with this um, and those, that really nice, pretty rose swirl effect. So I'm going to be doing that with some some rose swirls all over the top of our cake. I'm going to be using this one, which has got lots of little jagged teeth. This is a French tip nozzle. So it's, it's got probably about 15, 16 little jagged teeth around the outside. And that's going to give us a really combed effect as we pipe. And I'm probably just going to use that as little... Um, blobs everywhere and then this one here this is the Wilton 1E and I love this this is a mixture between the 1M and the French tip so it's got lots of little um lots of little uh like points like comb like teeth on it but instead of being straight up like they are on the French tip nozzle they are curved over the top so it gives you um, it gives you a really nice, soft, combed um, buttercream swirl effect. So we're going to be using that one. So the 1E, the French tip nozzle. I don't know what that is for the Wilton number, I'm afraid, but it's the typically called a French tip nozzle. And then the Wilton 1M, which is a pretty much a cupcake decorator standard nozzle. Now I'm going to decorate these in three colours and we're going to get those coloured up um, whilst the cake finishes off. And I'm using the Pro Gel colours. Now I'm using gel colours because we don't want to add liquid into our lovely fluffy buttercream. If we add liquid into this now, it's just going to start to separate and get really runny and when we try and pipe it, it's just not going to hold. So the Pro gels or any sort of gel concentrate color so the Mary color if you're over in the states is great as well um, you can get gel colors now in the supermarket dr Urk could do one um, the the idea behind them is they're concentrated so you only need a tiny little bit to color it up um, but the ones you buy in the supermarket sometimes aren't as strong so you may need a little bit more I was going to go with a pink, this is called strawberry, um, a yellow and a purple one. And then I was thinking, well, I found a turquoise one. So um, I was thinking pink, purple and turquoise or pink. I think the yellow one with the Harry bow and maybe then the turquoise one because we've got green in there. So pink. For the Haribo um, parts, yellow for the Haribo fried eggs, 
and the turquoise colour for, well, it goes with the little gummy bears that we've got in there. So they're the three colours that we're going to use. And it's so simple, all you just need to do is I have three bowls, three individual little bowls here, and I'm just going to spoon out sort of equal amounts of buttercream into each. I mean, I'm just doing this with a spoon. It is that light. And I'm going to keep a little bit non-coloured. So I'm just going to keep keep a little bit vanilla. And pop that on there out of the way. Okay. You can get the gel colours, like I said, all over now. Um, the, the thing as well with the concentrate colours is you can mix them together. So if you you can buy the base colours and they'll if you go onto Amazon they do them as a pack, so you can buy red, yellow, blue, green, all the base colours, but you can mix them up because they're not a liquid, because they're concentrate, think sort of like you're painting with them. So you can add um, a, a red and a yellow or a blue and a red to make purple and sort of stuff but you can buy so many different shades so let's start with a turquoise one and just going to we just need a tiny squeeze as you see there that is all we're going to need the more color you put in the stronger obviously it will be so start with a little bit and then mix it through and if you need more add a bit more but just be ever so careful with it you don't need to go overboard because it will be it will just be so much as you can see that's come really quickly i'm just making sure i've got everything in at the bottom there but this is got the light unfortunately coming through but this is our aqua it is more it looks a bit sky blue on there but it's a bit more of that greeny mermaidy blue and we'll go in with the lemon now this might need a little bit more than i've put in but you can see here that's that's as much as I've got on the um, that one. Let, yellow seems to be one of those colours though. You might need more um, to bring it up to the colour that you want, obviously, because you're counteracting the yellowness from the butter. I'm just going to ping your your comment up, Gina, but. Yes, mixing colours is so satisfying. I love this. These paints, anything, mixing colours, it's just, oh, I love seeing them all in. <laughs> but this is the yellow we've got. You, it probably doesn't look like there's a huge difference because of the light coming through the window, but it actually, we've got that really nice sort of pale primrose yellow uh, going on, which will work lovely against the aqua and then we're going in with the strawberry now you can get pink i've run out of pink but strawberry is like a ready pink so i haven't got much of this left so we hope we've got some in here Oop. there we go again that's all we've got in See how that we might want a little bit more strawberry. Oh, maybe not. So there we are. This is the strawberry pink so we've got 
the aqua, the yellow, and I can't hold three at once, and the strawberry pink. So these are going to all be decorated and piped over the top of our cake, and then we're going to scatter them over with the Harry Bow. You don't have to use Harry Bow, you can use sprinkles. You could go classic with the Marks and Spencers, with the old dolly mixtures, um, and all sorts. But you can use it. So there's lots of different options there. The fails that I had just talking whilst we wait for things before I get out and then I let you all to your Sunday. The thing, the fails that we sort of had with the Harry Bow were actually these are quite sugary. Um, they've got the gelatin in, they are they are a gummy sweet. So when they're heated, they melt really quickly. Now I tried doing a few things a bit like with the Rollos where you freeze them beforehand. Oops, let's see how this is. One moment. is probably the top is done that's a little bit yes this dude you can't really see from the hat and his hot is ready he's coming out I'm just going to pop to cool over there so all I did with that was just give it a quick uh, skewer test with the bamboo skewer um, and it came out nice and clean. Unlike the brownies last week, we want it to come out clean, that means it's cooked in the middle. Um, so that will cool in the pan for about 10-15 minutes and then I'll turn it out onto a wire rack and let it cool for the um, till it's really cool before I put any of these on the top. If I put these on top whilst it's still warm, it will just melt. Um, so yeah, where were I? I'm just gonna flick over to um, this one so we can see a little bit better. We are going to be putting, oops, not, not the one we wanted. We are going to, Everything will be on the website this week. The Rolo one from last week goes up today. We've had um, we've had to move hosting because my uh, website host decided to destroy the website. So uh, that will be up um, this afternoon when everything is happy and we're all tested and there's no problems there. But the um, this then is a sweetie vanilla cake. So it's really super moist. It's got that beautiful velvety, um, buttery, crumb because we've done that reverse crumb technique where we've started with the dry ingredients then added the fats and then finished off with the eggs so it stops that gluten formation and and just gives a really nice light springy but velvety uh smooth crumb to the cake it is just um perfect smothered in buttercream <laughs> yeah. but we are going to make some pre pans and, and and jazz it up a little bit you can just, if you wanted to, just put a normal water icing over the top and do sprinkles, really classic old school, school tray bake sort of style there. And um, I love these because they are such a go-to cake. You can take that, make it decorated, take it off to a, a party or a rule of six social gathering <laughs> or something like that. And it's all... Ha um, it's all good and you'll get it actually serves about 24 slices so you've got quite a lot of cake in there as well and it keeps for about a week um at the longest in an airtight container um you are best to eat it within two to three days um but what will happen with this one is it will get cut up and it will go in an airtight container and Ian will eat it during the week you can freeze it if you're going to freeze them uh, the best thing is to uh, let it all cool, take it out of the pan, let it cool fully, and then freeze it as a sheet if you have the room to do so. Um, and you can do that without breaking. And then you can just take it out and decorate that as the sheet um, when you're ready to. Um, but it is really, really easy to adapt for any occasion, anything. You know, with the chocolate one was just the chocolate with the simplest chocolate buttercream on the top. Um, 
So then, I'm going to uh, let you guys go off to your um, Sunday. Now I've been an utter klutz. You know, I've I've still I've had a butter uh, milk flip in my face, and egg everywhere, and buttercream, and all sorts. So I'm not, <laughs> not very hand-eye coordination today is a bit out the window, but. This is the Sweetie Roller Cake. I will pop everything up on the website and take the pictures and share some information over with you um, during this week. Um, now we just double check everything is back up and running. I will put all the information in there about why we use the reverse method for this and the difference between the baking powder and the baking soda. You know, they have worked. We've got a really nice, it's got a little bit of a dome on it, but we've got a really nice even sort of layer cake. We've not got one end higher than the other or a big dome in the middle. It's pretty much spot on. And when we ice it over, it's gonna be amazing. Um, but I'll pop all of that up on the blog. We are, going into, well, it's the leaves have started to fall off the trees here, so we really are going into autumn. Next week we're going to be doing a no-bake cheesecake. Yay! <laughs> so no baking, no turning the oven on, hopefully less mess, but we're going to be doing a crunchy one. Uh, so a honeycomb chocolate um, uh, cheesecake on a dark, no, a milk chocolate digestive Base. The, the cheesecake filling will be like a milk chocolate cheesecake filling with honeycomb pieces and pieces of crunchy through it. And then um, we'll pour um, properly, probably, I haven't decided what to do on the top yet, but we might just pour some chocolate over the top um, and a layer of honeycomb brittle so you've got a real nice crunchiness going there. But that's next week. This was a vanilla tray bake cake. It will be when I've finished it and it's cool. Um, Thank you very much, as always. Thank you for joining me, everybody. I've seen everybody flipping in and out and things, and Gina, you've been here all morning. Thank you. Um, it's, as always, it's a pleasure. I hope wherever you are in the world, you are safe and well. Please take care and look after yourself. I've got friends in New Zealand, and they're back on lockdown, and people, friends up in the north as well of the UK, just all the usual, everybody take care, look after yourself, look after each other, and I will see you all again next week. Take care, thanks for watching, bye for now.